Right, to explain briefly what uh, what there is in Berlin to interest someone with an interest in astronomy. First off, there is the Arkenholt Observatory, as pictured here, with its 21 meter long telescope. The telescope was set up in Treptower Park in 1896 on the occasion of a large industrial exhibition and is still there as a public observatory and museum. Combined with your visit, you could visit the large Soviet memorial in the centre of the park and on the banks of the Spree, there is still the Café Tsena. There has been a watering hole here since 1820. Recently it has had mixed fortunes, but, but I believe it is currently still open. In, the, in former days, there was a room here where you could play in, pay in Deutsche Marks. Uh, this was for visitors from the West who could spend a few, few hours in the East without having, having to change any currency. Friedrich Archenholt was also active in a scientific society called the Urania Gesellschaft, based, on, based in Invaladienstrasse, and which had its own observatory. This society itself does still exist today in some form, but uh, nowadays it's in Schöneberg. The loss of this observatory for the West, uh, this observatory in Treptow for the West, was compensated for by the Wil Wilhelm F Forster Observatory and Planetarium in Schöneberg. This is based on an artificial hill formed from wartime rubble called the Insulana. A typical visit would involve a show in the planetarium at the low level, followed by a visit to look through a telescope in the observatory. The observatory possesses a Bamberg telescope, which was rescued from the ruins of the Urania Observatory after the last war, and has been used and had been used to detect Eros in 1898, a body which was visited in 2001 by a probe, the near-Earth asteroid rendezvous Schumacher probe. There are two, these two institutions are complemented by the Zeiss Planetarium in Prenzlauerberg. All these three institutions now operate under Stiftung Planetarium and information can be found at this website www.planetarium.berlin There is a professional Berlin observatory which has been based in Babelsberg since about 1913. Uh, nowadays you can view, view the exterior from the eastern edge of Babelsberg Park. This is about 500 meters walk from the western edge of the Griebnitzsee. And uh, generally in the, also in the area you've got the Glienicke Bridge which is the scene of several prisoner, prisoner exchanges before 1990 and that's about one kilometer to the west. And on the western edge of Babelsberg, Babelsberg Park you can stroll along the banks of the River Havel. The observatory was still a major institution in the early 20th century, but its instruments were taken as reparations by the Soviet Union. The Crimea, Crimean Observatory still has its Babelsberg telescope. Berlin Observatory opened, operated originally from 1700, just north of Unter den Linden, actually on Dorotheenstrasse. However, in 1835 it had moved to a site off Friedrichstrasse in Kreuzberg. This move took place under the directorship of Johann Boda, who was succeeded by Johann Enke. An important event during Enke's time was the discovery of the planet Neptune in 1836. This is a major story, but too long to relate in a brief summary like this. On the site today, you will find, Bab you will find Bessel Park, although Bessel worked in Königsberg and not directly in Berlin. The road along the eastern side of the park is Enkerstrasse. In Potsdam itself there is a, also an astrophysical observatory which today is administered jointly with the Babelsberg Observatory. Exiting from the S-Bahn in Potsdam and turning south, within about 500 metres of the station you will find Albert Einsteinstrasse which leads directly up the Telegrafenburg hill to the Albert Einstein Scientific Park which contains the observatory buildings plus other institutions. You can enter the park and look around. The main building of the observatory is complemented by the building housing the Great Refractor. Research here followed on from works by the likes of Bunsen and Kirchhoff in Heidelberg and work on the sun by Schwalbe and Spurer. The first director, Vogel, was able to use the Doppler shift to detect enormous velocities for stars. A further director was Karl Schwarzschild who died during the First World War, but is best remembered for his work on black holes. Also in the park is the Einstein Tower. 
This appears to be an important building in the Expressionist movement uh, by virtue of oh, important uh, building from the architectural point of view. Uh, otherwise, the, the stated scientific purpose of trying to protect, um, detect the uh, gravitational redshift from the sun was uh, never fulfilled, obviously, because it's, it's such a small effect. So a couple of brief other locations to mention briefly to finish off. There is a small observatory right to the west in Starken. Uh, th this has been taken, this has recently taken over a nearby building of the former Starken border crossing and they're using that as the society headquarters. This observatory is named after a local astronomer, Bruno Hans Borgel. Bruno Borgel also had his name given to a planetarium in the Sicilianhof Palace in Potsdam. This has now become the Urania Planetarium in the Gutenbergstrasse in the, in the Dutch Quarter of Potsdam. Right, so that's just a very brief introduction. If you want to go onto my uh, YouTube site, there is a, uh, a longer description of astronomy in Berlin for those who are interested. And, you know, there's possibly one or two other sites on my uh, site that uh, might be of interest to you if you, t if you t choose to look around. Uh, there's also my website in general if you want to have a look at that. That's bd99.co.uk. Bd okay, thanks very much.